is a controversial statement. I think Call of Cthulhu works better in short, standalone adventures. I mean, sure, there's been some fantastic campaigns that Chaosium has released and even re-released due to its popularity. Usually they're full of globe-trotting voyages to save the world, and, you know, maybe one day I'll make a video on those. But those aren't the games that people remember. To me, where Call of Cthulhu really shines is in shorter games that last only a handful of sessions. These kind of games are often so different to the games that we're familiar with, and they're often rife with brand new settings, creative experimentation from the writers, and sometimes a complete facelift in the genre. I think they serve two purposes for the hobby. As a palate cleanser if you're feeling burnt out from your last game, or an unforgettable way of introducing Call of Cthulhu to brand new players. Today, we're going to be venturing into my favourite Call of Cthulhu standalone adventures. I've added links in the description if you want more information. I'll also do my best to avoid spoilers, you know, so I don't ruin the surprise. Unland by Scott Dawood Starting with the most mature of all five games, Unland is a modern-day psychological horror that takes the dark themes of Call of Cthulhu and turns it right on its head. After a heinous incident involving the actions of a member of staff, a popular fairground closes its doors to the public under a black cloud of lies and criminal allegations, only for something to move in. This adventure is only four pages long, largely sandbox in nature and very light in story. There are no pre-generated characters, allowing the game to be run in a very versatile and personalised way, but I'll go into that later. I first heard this scenario being played from the Ain't Slayed Nobody podcast, run by the writer himself, Scott Dawood. I was fascinated by it immediately. Even if you don't want to run this game, I do highly encourage anyone to give this show a listen. Scott's joyful, yet chilling game style has been an absolute inspiration for me. Not just for this game, but for all games that I have ever run. Unfortunately, due to its compact nature, Unland does lack pre-generated characters, forcing the game to rely completely on the player's role-playing abilities as to why their characters are there and how they will respond to the game's eerie environment. This can turn a few groups off, as Unland is very dependent on the motivations and the backstory of the characters, meaning a lot of preparation might be needed in advance by the Keeper. In other words, this isn't the kind of game that you can just play straight from the book. That being said, Unland is the kind of game that's full of improvisational possibilities for Keepers and players who want to run a psychological horror game, where the danger lies not in the monsters and the violence, but within our own minds. Panacea by Sandy Peterson A game so chilling and memorable, it inspired me to make a few videos about it just so I could relive it all over again. Set in the modern day, our group of investigators uncover the sinister secret behind a local medical company and a cure-all drug that simply everyone is talking about. What I love about this game is just how much inspiration Sandy Peterson has taken from sci-fi and body horror films when writing this adventure. You can almost hear that 80s synth horror music playing as you read it. It's a stark contrast from the classic 1920s setting that we're all too familiar with. In my opinion, it's a great change of scenery that Call of Cthulhu needs to stay fresh and interesting. The only drawback I have with Panacea is that it suffers from that all too common problem of railroading. There is a handful of scenes where players are forced to perform certain actions or else the game just simply doesn't continue. Uh, this, at least I like to think, is the symptom of being primarily focused on new keepers who want to play this straight away with as little preparation as necessary. Despite that, I do love this adventure. If you're a keeper who's looking for a palate cleanser of a game that will have you falling in love with it all over again, I do thoroughly encourage you to give Panacea a try. The Necropolis by Leigh Carr Out of all the games in this list, the Necropolis has probably the shortest runtime, and that's not a criticism. The players are 1920s Egyptologists and historians, uncovering a long-lost ancient crypt in the Valley of the Kings that should have stayed buried. It's very clear this game was written as an hour-long convention game, as it includes some very handy suggestions for timekeeping, although I've yet to find anybody who actually managed to keep that game within an hour. It's very easy to run this adventure straight from the book with no prior preparation, which is perfect for anybody who's brand new to the hobby. 
but this also has its obvious drawbacks, as there's very little room for players to improvise or roleplay. The Necropolis has a dungeon crawl design, which can come across as restrictive in an investigative game such as Call of Cthulhu, as they're forced to proceed one room at a time. Regardless, it's still an absolute blast to play, especially with brand new players who want a brilliant game about exploring an old Egyptian tomb. Viral by Alex Jalot and Bud Baird If you've ever found yourself butting heads with the technological setbacks of the classic 1920s, wishing that your investigator could just pull out a phone and look up the information instead of waste hours in libraries, Viral is the game for you. Set in the modern day, the players are a group of ghost hunters who are exploring a remote island off the coast of Italy, whilst live-streaming to a massive online fan base. I heard of Viral from Seth Skorkowski's review video, and I can only repeat what he said, it's a fantastic example of how to do a modern day adventure right. The game absolutely excels when it comes to using modern day technology to assist in investigation, including ghost hunting equipment to pick up changes in temperature or the electronic signals. My personal favourite is the live stream chat, which constantly comments and critiques on what the player characters are doing. This is a fantastic way of either motivating the characters to press on, giving them clues in certain areas, or giving them suggestions for where to go next. Viral is somewhat sandbox in design, with plenty of events and areas to explore, which can be quite overwhelming for newer keepers who now have to handle copious maps and handouts and random encounters and the like. Fortunately, thanks to the clever writing of having a live stream running at the same time, it's actually quite easy to shorten the adventure, especially if you're running this for a single session. In short, Viral is a great adventure that does not shy away on detail and immersion. It's worth checking out. And yes, I do include watching Seth's video. Carnival of Madness by Alex Gillot and Ian Christensen If your players are anything like mine, there is one day of the year where they want you to drop what you're doing and run a horror one-shot. Halloween. And if you find yourself in that position and you don't know where to start, do yourself a favour and check out Carnival of Madness. Set in 1970s Massachusetts, a brand new carnival has opened outside of town, full of apple cider, pumpkins, carnival games, costume competitions, and the guest of honour from another world. This game is so full of Halloween fun, it's practically dripping off the pages. There is so much happening on every single page, you will never run out of events or encounters to throw at your players, whether it's enjoying the carnival activities or investigating the sinister secrets lurking in this peculiar place. I played this with a group of players years ago, half of them hadn't played Call of Cthulhu before, and they still talk about Carnival of Madness to this day. There's a very good reason why I've put this at number one on my list, but if you think that this is the perfect game for your group, I want you to promise me something. Even though on its drive through RPG page, it's advertised as being playable in a single session, I implore you, don't do that. Carnival of Madness is so full of activities and events, it would take weeks to just cover everything the game has to offer. And I would not have it any other way. So please, let your players try the carnival games and let them win prizes. Let them take part in the festivities, because when they discover the sinister horrors that lie in plain sight, it'll feel more personal and they'll remember it for years to come. Thanks for watching.